Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about how we can use objects to model real world entities in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, we have three basic data types. We have strings, numbers, and booleans. And just using those three data types, we can represent all sorts of information. I can represent any number, any like textual information or any true false value. But here's the problem in the real world when we're dealing with like real things a lot of stuff can't just be represented using a string or a number or a boolean for example let's say i wanted to represent like a movie inside of my javascript well there's no movie data type right i wanted to use a movie and represent a movie inside my code but we don't have a data type for that right all we have is strings integers and booleans but here's the thing, we could actually represent all of the information about a movie using strings, integers, and booleans, and we could sort of create our own little movie data type that is composed of strings, integers, and booleans. And that's basically an object. An object allows us to use those three basic data types in order to represent more complex information. So I could take a movie, for example, and represent a movie inside of my code using an object. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do that today. Over here, I'm on this website. It's called IMDB. And this is a, stands for Internet Movie Database. It's a really popular website that has information about movies. Um, and I'm over here on this page for the social network. I thought this would be appropriate because it's kind of like a programming movie. But you can see IMDB is actually representing this movie here on its page. And IMDB is actually using an object. Now, I'm not sure what programming language they're using, but they're definitely using like an object in order to represent this. So you can see we have like the movie's title, the release date of the movie, uh, the rating, so it's PG-13. We have how long it was, like two hours. We have the genre. So we have all of this information about the movie. In addition, we also have information about like who was in the movie. So there's all these like actors you can see uh, Jesse Eisenberg here. We, if we click on this, it brings us to a page about Jesse Eisenberg. So IMDB also has like an object for Jesse Eisenberg, right? They have his name, uh, where he was born and what day he was born. They also have like a biography down here. So IMDB is actually representing a movie and an actor on its website using objects. I'm going to show you guys how we could create objects like that in order to represent like a movie of our own. So why don't we do that? Let's create a movie object and we'll actually just create an object for the social network. So I'm going to come down here. I'll just create a variable my movie and I'm going to set it equal to an object. So an object just open and close curly braces. Now inside of here, we can actually put information about our movie. So we can start to like model our movie inside of this object. So I can say title and the title is the social network and we could say release year and i think it said 2010 so we can say 2010 and then it was duration so we can give duration i think it said two hours so we can make this like a decimal number and then there was also all those actors so we could say actors right but actors is actually a little bit more complex than these pieces of data. So the title is just a string, right? The release year is just 2010. It's a, you know, it can be a string. The duration can be a number, but the actors are more complex. Remember, we looked at that Jesse Eisenberg page and Jesse Eisenberg was actually an object in himself. So what I wanna do with these actors is create an array of actor objects. So I'm gonna create objects for these different actors and I'll store them inside of this actors array. So you'll see down here, we'll make an entry into our actors array and I'm just gonna make an object. So if I wanna make an object in here, I can just use open and close curly braces. And now inside here, we can start defining our Jesse Eisenberg object. So I can say like name, Jesse Eisenberg, I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it. And he also had some other information. So like his birthday and his hometown. So we can say birthday and hometown. So let's see what those are. So it looks like his birthday is October 5th, 1983, and he was born in New York City. So 
birthday, we can make a date. So we can say a new date. And it's just going to be October 5th, 1983. And then his hometown was New York City. So we can just say New York, New York. So now we have a Jesse Eisenberg object, right? So inside of this actors array, I can actually access this entire object just about Jesse Eisenberg. I think there was also some other actors in that movie. So we can create another object here. Let's see who else we can make an object for. And I'll actually just copy this Jesse Eisenberg object um, and we'll make a different object for someone else. So who else was in the social network? Looks like Rooney Mara was in the social network. So we have this page for Rooney Mara. And again, we have her birthday. So her birthday is April 17th, 1985. And she was born in Bedford, New York. So we can say April 17th. 1985 and she was born in Bedford, New York. And then her name is Rooney Mara. So now inside of this actors array, we have two actors, right? We have Jesse Eisenberg, which is just represented with this actor object. And then we have Rooney Mara, which is represented with this other actor object. And I'm just storing both of those objects inside of this array. And so now we've basically modeled our entire movie. So we have the title of the movie, the release year, duration, we have all the actors. And then for each actor, we have information. So for this Jesse Eisenberg actor, we have his name, his birthday, and his hometown. So I can actually go ahead and print this object out onto the screen. So we can just say document.write, and I think it was called my movie. So when I print this out to the screen, you'll see that we just get an object here and I can start accessing information. So if I said my movie dot name, we'll get the name of the movie or, or wait, I called it title. Whoops. So we get the title of the movie. We can also say like the duration, we'll get that. And we could access those different actors. So I could say my movie dot actors. And if I wanted to access an individual actor, remember this is an array, so I can just refer to it. So we could say actor zero dot name. And now this should be Jesse Eisenberg. So you see it is, and we can get like his hometown. And we could also do the same thing for Rooney Mara. So we could get Rooney Mara's hometown and then her name. And so what I really want to kind of like instill in you guys in this video is how we can model real world entities using these objects, right? So there's, in other words, there's no actor data type, right? All we have is strings, integers, and booleans for the most part, right? So there's no data type for representing an actor inside of our program. We can use an object to create an actor data type. And that data type is composed of strings, um, numbers, and booleans. And also we can use special objects like dates, right? So an object can also have other objects inside of it. So we've, es we've essentially created like an actor data type and we've created like a movie data type up here. So that's why objects are really useful because we can model more complex things inside of our programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.